One of the popular pieces of equipment to go out ice fishing now is marine electronic sonar. So you can see how deep you are, uh, if you've got fish underneath you, and if there's no fish and it's time for you to move on and find another area, you can even see the structure that you've got underneath you, like, like vegetation, weeds. Well, I wanna show you how to use one of the popular sonar devices of XLR. And it's really, really simple. So you've only got a few main parts. You've got the head of the unit, you've got the carrying case, Behind it, you've got the battery, and then you've got the transducer. And this is one of the most important pieces right here, the transducer, because this sends sound into the water. And that signal, when it reverberates off the bottom, comes back, and now it's also a receiver. So it's actually um, doing two jobs when you're out ice fishing. It's really important. Inside of this is a crystal and it's fragile, so you have to protect that transducer at all times. Like if I'm going from hole to hole, I'm not dragging this across the ice. If I'm transporting my unit in my vehicle, I wanna make sure that the transducer is secure in the holder. I don't want it rolling around in the back of the truck, okay? Now when I come out and I've drilled a hole, I'm ready to fish. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my transducer into the hole, and I've got this float on here, this ice deucer float, that has a stopper on it and I want to position the transducer so it's just at about the bottom of the ice fishing hole. I really don't want it below it. I'll be honest with you, when I ice fish, a lot of times I'm keeping it up a little bit higher in the hole because I don't want my line to catch it if I get a big fish on. The other thing is you want to make sure that you manage this cable. You don't want a lot of extra cable out because you don't want it to get caught in, in your rod or your line. So on the side of it, there's this little holder that you can just put the transducer cable into and it's gonna keep it tucked away. So you just want enough so it can go into the hole. The other thing when I position my Vexlars, I always think about what hand I'm holding the rod with. So if I have to pull the transducer out, if I get a big fish on, uh, that I can do that with the hand that is free while my other hand is fighting that fish. So I'm right-handed when I'm using a spinning rod, I'm cranking with my left hand. So I've got the Vexlar over here so I can easily keep that fish, keep the line tight, and I can just pull this transducer out, get it out of the way. So we've come to our ice fishing hole. We're on the right spot. I've put the transducer down. Now this bottom button, it says range, and I just turn it. First I turn it to the 10, and I've got this FLX 20, but I also have, uh, an accessory on top of this, the digital depth readout. And so it tells me exactly what depth I'm in right now, and it says 12.8 feet. Well, right now, with the range at 10 feet, I can't actually see my image on here because it can only go down to 10 feet. So I put it to the setting times two, and now I can see the bottom. So here's what we've got. This red line at the top, this is the ice. This is the surface of the water column. Then the next red line, solid red line that you see down here, this is the bottom. Okay, you don't have to pay attention to any of these marks over on the left-hand side of the screen right now. So we can see the whole water column. Here's the surface, here's the bottom. And anything that you see that shows up between those two, it's either a fish or minnows. You can even see an air bubble there. We can watch our jig, a really tiny ice jig, and easily see it. Now, some of the other buttons that you need to be able to pay attention to, You've got the mode button, and this will do things like give you a low power mode where you can cut the power in half, a zoom mode where you can zoom into the bottom six or the bottom 12 feet of the water column, and you have a zoomed in enhanced image of everything that's down below, including your bait and fish. And then you've got the gain knob. And really, this is not increasing the volume of the signal that's going into the water because it's a series of clicks that are traveling down through the water column, returning to that transducer, and it's turning it into a digital image. But it is uh, increasing the ability for that transducer to listen for that signal. So when I turn it up, you're going to see uh, a more intense image uh, of the jig, of the fish, so they're gonna appear larger. Now, I'll tell you honestly, this unit is so sensitive that you can leave that gain mode down at about nothing. I mean, at the most minimum setting, and you're still going to be able to see everything very, very clearly. The deeper the water that you go into, the more you're going to have to adjust that gain. But to show you what it looks like as I drop a jig down, so I've got a very, very small jig on here. I've just got a, a clam drop jig 
uh, with a Mackie plastic tail on here. And you'll be able to see this as, I, as it descends through the water column. As soon as I get it below that transducer, there you can already see that jig just a couple feet below the ice. Now as it drops, I can see this looks like I probably have a fish there, this target. I've got some weeds down here at the bottom. And these red marks, we just we call those targets. And I try to put my jig right above it. I, tr I want to get those fish to try to chase and to come up towards it. But you can see my jig right here as I move it up. You can see real time the jig moving up and you can see these smaller fish chasing it. And when they get together, one of the important things is that you're not only focused on your electronics, but that you're also watching your rod tip because that's your strike indicator. Even though the electronics are helpful and tell you what's below, you still need to rely upon your eyes and your rod tip to be able to catch the fish. So now when you're finished fishing for the day, you want to make sure again that you take your, your transducer out carefully. You can wrap up the power or the transducer cord and you always want to store the transducer in the transducer holder. One other thing to mention is whenever you take that transducer out of the hole and you go to another hole, if it's really cold outside, you want to make sure that the bottom of it, the face of it is free of ice and slush. So a lot of times what I'll do before I put it in, I'll just take, or even when I take it out, I'll take that transducer and I'll just kind of rub it on my leg a little bit just to make sure that it's got a clean signal when I put it in the next hole. But you're going to turn the unit off, turning that knob all the way to the left, to the off position, storing the transducer. And when you take this home, uh, it's a good idea to just charge it after every use. With that battery, it's going to run for a long time. But just to make sure that you're not out on the ice without power, plug it in when you get home and you're going to be able to catch more fish because you've got your eyes below the water.